Hello, TikTok. You know, I wanted to have a uh, somewhat of a serious conversation or a series of conversations. I am going to start. I'm using my YouTube channel as my podcast channel. So if you notice, I do put longer videos on there. This may end up being one, and then I split it up and onto to TikTok. You know, the first thing I wanted to go over is why I went on TikTok to begin with and why I started doing what I do. Um, I'm not a preacher. I'm not somebody who's telling other people that they're wrong and, and I'm right, I'm wrong and they're right. Um, what happened was I found that I run four different businesses, really five, and that throughout my life I've had positive uh, experiences and negative experiences in running those different businesses and I thought it'd be kind of fun to share the experiences. What I find is, and it's just human nature, some people feel like they want to argue with me over any issue that may come up. Um, that's why I don't argue. You're more than welcome to give your opinion. I welcome it. I welcome everyone's opinion. Look, I've been wrong a bunch of times. Even on my TikToks, I say when I'm wrong. I've told stories of when I've been wrong in the past. I have a nice big long story coming up I'm going to do this afternoon. I'm going to post probably tonight. Um, it's a story that I didn't think I was going to tell on TikTok, but I decided over the weekend that I do want to tell the story because of a lot of questions that have been asked. Um, but the reason I went on TikTok is, A, I have an audiovisual business that I started when I was 18 years old. Nobody showed me how to start it. Nobody in my business, my family was in the business. It was just me on my own. Um, I started my, my real estate investing on my own. Nobody in the family was in the business. I did it on my own. The trash business, I started that one on, though. No, same thing. These are all businesses I started on my own. Um, you know, I just put up, I did put up a, an earlier uh, TikTok this morning where I was interviewed when I was 17 years old by a local news reporter 40 years ago. And when I was interviewed, that was in my uh, three bedroom ranch that I grew up with with my four brothers and my parents in Warwick, Rhode Island. I'm from Warwick. I grew up in Warwick, went to all the Warwick public schools, graduated from Warwick Vets High School in 1982. Um, and, and Every one of my brothers went into completely different fields. We are all different, different industry, different fields, nothing related uh, to what my parents did. Uh, we were all on our own, and we are all successful um, on our own, uh, uh, financially and um, family-wise. We're just all successful on our own. Just the way it worked out, we have great parents that, that you know, set the groundwork for us. My parents are still alive. They're both. 88, about to turn 89. They live in Florida in the winter, Rhode Island in the summer. As you know, I'm renovating the condominium for them. Um, so, so, so that's pretty much my background. And, and again, my stories are all related to my background. Um, sometimes I take myself too seriously, sometimes I don't. If you saw the TikToks I did yesterday in Schenectady, New York, well, I don't take myself seriously all the time. What's interesting is, for instance, my real estate business, we've been focused lately on that one tenant who stole the $12,000. And there's so many opinions on that on different sides that it's, um, it's interesting. I never expected it to blow up that way. Um, it's interesting because you have some people that made a series of mistakes. Rent Relief made mistakes. Um, the tenant made some mistakes. Um, the... Um, the uh, judge definitely made mistakes. And you know what? Some can argue that I made mistakes blocking his car in this and I made mistakes. I don't see it as a mistake. It was a calculated risk that I took by blocking in his vehicles uh, to hold him in the house until we went to court on Friday. As soon as we left court on Friday, the first thing I did is had my staff go and move all the vehicles because it was an experiment. The only thing that did work for me was that it did keep him there, but he didn't show up to court anyway. But it was, it was a crapshoot. Um, to get him to court. Uh, is that case over? No. I think that people think I'm obsessed with him in getting my $12,000. Well, I don't know if I made that clear. You know, I'm getting my $12,000. I'm getting it from rent relief because my contract was with them. It's not my fault they made a mistake. No, they can lie or misrepresent saying that they left messages for us, which is interesting because I have four full-time staff in my office that answer the phones every day and they will tell you and they will testify that I am all over them answering the phone and not letting it go to voicemail. 
I have customers calling me for audiovisual services. I have customers calling me to rent apartments. I have customers calling me to rent dumpsters for butler waste. And I, those, people are, those phones are answered by my people all day long. So I have to challenge the rent relief uh, Hun Singer's assertion that she left messages. But not only do I have to challenge it, our phone system keeps records. Um, it's a computerized phone system, so we have those records. At the same time, and this is where I think there's a lot of confusion with the rent relief, when a tenant applies for rent relief, we get an email, and there's actually a website we go to, it's called The Portal, where we put our information in. So it shows one side the tenant's information, one side of the portal, our information. As you submit the information, you get check marks. So forget those phone calls they said they left us. I don't know why they left phone calls. I have 20, in fact, that's why it's, to me, it's misleading and misrepresenting. We have 25 tenants who applied for rent relief. We didn't get any phone calls about them. They filled out the application, we filled out our application, we got the money. So why all of a sudden now the, the tenant got it by accident, rent relief said, oh, we called, the, we called the landlord and left four messages. Why? You didn't call us anybody else. You, you're, not, you're not calling any other landlords. So that's where there's a lot of misinformation being out there. Um, Andrew and Heather worked tirelessly in the office working with the tenants to get them their rent relief and, and we've been successful, highly successful. The, uh, it's just unfortunate that um, this particular case is convoluted. Channel 10 came and did an interview two weeks ago. I thought it was a pretty good interview, but again, they come in they interview for 20 minutes, half hour. They can only put 15, 20 seconds on, online on the screen. Um, that particular interview was in response to us sending out a press release. This past week, the interview that was put up by Channel 12, we don't know who solicited that interview. Um, the interviewer was good, but she definitely came in from a consumer point of view, and we, we feel that, you know, rent relief, that's what they misrepresented, the fact that we were not cooperating. First of all, if somebody's gonna give me $12,000, okay, I'll run down the street naked for $12,000, so we would cooperate. That is, it's almost so unimaginable that we wouldn't cooperate. That's what's crazy about the whole thing, for somebody to even suggest that. I'm in the business to have tenants in my apartments and pay rent. Now, that's the other thing, too. People say, why didn't you kick him out two weeks ago, three weeks ago? I left him there for a couple of reasons. A, I was hoping that he would do the right thing, come around and give us the check. He'd be in there today in good standing. And if he did do that, he would actually get another three months because they're offered in January, February, and March. He chose not to do that. So he lost those three months. They are going after him for the $12,000, even though they're saying the case is closed. The case isn't closed because when he signs the contract with Rent Relief, it says that money will be used for rent and rent only. He didn't do that. He used, the rent, he used that money for other things. That's where the fraud comes into play. So, yeah, we didn't get it from him. He got it. That's where I think people don't understand that. I don't think he should have, got, have gotten it. That's what my passion is. That's why I've been pushing it, because he should not have gotten it. He still shouldn't have it. I'm getting it, so I'm going to be made whole. So for the people that are taking pleasure in us losing in court, taking pleasure that I'm not being made whole, I'm sorry to, to, to burst your bubble. That's not how it works. Um, but again, I'm not mad. I think you can see, okay, that happened on Friday. Yesterday I was in New York having some fun with my family. Today I'm back. I got some really good TikToks I'm going to do that I've been waiting to do. One of them was this one to explain to people that when I started my business, and this is actually related to another TikTok I'm doing, when I started my business, there was nobody there to guide me. You know, I found out about your certificate of occupancies when I get a letter from the city. You didn't get a certificate of occupancy. I find out about our taxes when I get a letter from the state. Hey, you didn't pay your taxes. So I always felt that, that was a problem. That was no, there was nobody you could reach out to to guide you, to mentor you in starting a business as a young, a young person starting business. And I, I still don't see it in some of the cities and towns. And, uh, and that was one of my arguments. Um, with the city of Warwick where I grew up. I grew up in the city of Warwick. All my businesses are based in the city of Warwick as far as the home base goes, my offices. For now, um, I am moving, slowly migrating out of Warwick. I'm welcome to other cities in the area. I live in Cranston, but I have been welcomed into West Warwick. I've been welcomed into Johnston. And these are all cities in my area, and I appreciate that. You know, Warwick, I, I didn't do, I have not had anything on TikTok about Warwick at all. Warwick has a Facebook page on their little, it's a, it's a private Facebook page called a realistic page of Warwick, the good and the bad of Warwick. 
There's only 5,000 people on this Facebook page, but it makes sense because it's everything related to Warwick. So I did a video on that page a few weeks ago, put it up, some of the things I liked, some things I didn't like, praised some of the people, probably didn't praise some of the people. In fact, I didn't praise some of the people, but I purposely didn't put it on TikTok because I didn't think it was appropriate for TikTok at the time. I wanted to focus on the city. Unfortunately, that particular page, because it's privately run, the administrators of that page can pick and choose who's on it, so they keep knocking me off. They don't like what I have to say about the city. Yet the page welcomes people. So that's going to be all on the TikTok. I'm going to put the page up. I'm going to share the page with you. I'm going to share what I put on there so people can see. You know, I, 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 I love the city. I grew up in the city. Um, one of the comments on that page was, you know, we're glad you moved out of Warwick. Stay out of Warwick. My response was, oh, is that Warwick's new economic development plan? If you're not happy with something, move out and take your business with you. Is that what they're selling to the people? I don't think that's a great, great economic development plan. Um, I don't believe that is the mayor's intent, but obviously the people that are in support of the mayor and we in that private page, that was supposed to be an honest page for the good and the bad. Um, obviously they made a mistake because now they've only left me one option, and that option is for me to use my forum on TikTok to do the, uh, the stories on the city of Warwick and, and everywhere else I am. And of course, in that forum, I have 190,000 followers, not 5,000 measly viewers on a Facebook page in the city of Warwick. So I am going to start doing a lot more videos regarding that. My videos are long like this. I know I tell stories. I know I drag out. I try to give as much information as possible. My TikTok, my attitude towards TikTok, my persona, is sharing information, educating. If... When I look at the comments and somebody just puts the word slumlord, I realize that person did the best to reach down into their soul and their experience, their life experience, their education, their friends, the people around them, their parents. And after all that struggling, they could only come up with the word slumlord. I feel bad for them. I feel like they're, they're, they're challenged and they're not going to amount to much. I accept it. I don't, if you notice, I don't delete anything. I leave it all up there. Don't delete anything on TikTok. I, I take all the negative because I, I want my 180,000 people to see what we're dealing with in society right now where there are some people out there that just unfortunately don't have the ability, the education, the maturity, uh, uh, the experience to, to really form a legitimate opinion that's worthwhile offering that maybe we can have a healthy discussion. I love healthy discussions. You know, there are people on there that have disagreed with me and then actually I've gotten into a healthy discussion. Very often they are right, you know? I mean, I was chasing this kid to get the $12,000, but it was really to give it back to rent relief because I'm getting my 12,000. I just don't think he should get it. Being a drug addict, his wife's a drug addict. We gave federal money, $12,000 of federal money to drug addicts. Whether it's spent or not, I have no idea. I don't think anybody's gonna even know, okay? If they can do that many drugs in six weeks. The bottom line is, is that I, don't, I didn't get the money from him. He still has the money and it is what it is. So now we just move on. We move on. I do other TikToks. I bought some, so that's the other thing I was talking about too. So, you know, people, you know, make a joke about, ah, uh, you lost, see, ha, ha, ha. So, what knocks me down makes me stronger. It's always been that way. So in the last six weeks, while I've been fighting this guy over the $12,000, let me talk about what else is going on in my life. The Butler Waste, which you know is a little thorn on my side, has actually grown a little bit. We've actually signed up some more permanent customers. That's a positive thing. In the last six weeks, I've purchased three properties. I purchased a nine unit in West Warwick, a six unit in Coventry, and a six unit in Cranston. So I've added 21 units to my portfolio during this six weeks that I was fighting with this guy. My ice cream shops are winding down. I do keep one open year round. So what's happened in the last six weeks, or actually today is the last day for two of the stores that are closing tonight at nine o'clock for the season. They'll open up again in the middle of March. But my other one in Warwick, the West Shore Road store stays open year round now. I started that last year. And I'm opening up a fourth store in March. So that's something that happened. The audio visual business. Tonight, I'm actually gonna go on live. Um, Rick, who's my senior project manager, is in Orlando at the Portofino, Lowe's Portofino Hotel in Universal Studios. He's doing a very large conference, producing a very large conference 
for me, and uh, I'm going to go live to him at that conference and talk to him and interview him because the audiovisual business, which I have not done much with in the last year and a half for obvious reasons, was in hiatus, but now it's back, full swing, back full swing. We have some really, really, really exciting conferences coming up um, that around the country that I'm going to share with people on TikTok and answer questions about that business, which I really have never spoken a lot about that business. Um, and that's my main business. That's my biggest income. It's the biggest profitable business I have, and I really haven't talked much about it. I'm always talking about the real estate. I think there's more drama with the real estate. Um, so maybe that's why I thrive on the drama of the real estate. So I do have a lot of TikToks coming up that, again, what I wanted to do, share my life experiences. It's just my experiences, good, bad, ugly. Um, so when people want to say something negative, feel free. It just shows me and my followers. And if you have a couple of followers, you know what your, you know, your attitude is and your maturity level. And I'm okay with that. So I am boring. I know people say I'm whining all the time and crying all the time. And you know, fine. Uh, you, you're more than welcome to your opinion on that. I'm sharing information. You know, when we blocked in the cars, when we blocked in the U-Haul truck, you know, when we go there with the sheriff. It's all education. It's all information for other landlords to see what the challenges are and maybe learn something how you can deal with these tenants in the future if you get some of the ideas from us. So that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So I will continue to do it. It's therapeutic for me. I enjoy sharing the information because I know what a challenge it was for me early on getting that information. In fact, it was such a challenge that I actually you know, did some things which I'm gonna do a TikTok about uh, today. Um, I think people will be a little surprised at um, to try to get the information out. And uh, so that's the story with that. So that's my TikTok. Other people entertain. You know, I love following the talented entertainers, the comedians on TikTok. I just, I enjoy it. That's not what I did it for. I'm not doing it. I'm not competing with anybody. It's just me. Um, I have 100 and I think 89,000 followers, something like that, and 1.9 million likes. I didn't ask for one. I don't think you folks can go back and say, oh, like for this, push for that, like for this, tap for this. You know, I don't do that. I've never asked. I appreciate each and every one I got because they're unsolicited. I didn't ask to ask for them. So I think mine are more valuable to me in my heart because the people that chose to follow me and like my things, it's true to them. They're really enjoying it. It's not because they said, hey, could you tap this? I'll give you the answer to that or like this. It's not about that. I'm doing it because I enjoy doing it. And what happens is when you enjoy doing something, you know, things follow and that's exactly what happened, you know, and I have all the followers and the likes and it's fun. Um, I am serious once in a while, like I am this morning, but as you can see yesterday, I do mix in a little comedy with uh, my daughter's bedroom. I mix in a little fun stuff because that's just my sense of humor. You know, I want to show people that I do, I'm not sticking the mud, I do offer a variety. Um, and like I said, this video here is long, so I'll put this entire video on my YouTube channel, which is Jeff Never Had Job Security on YouTube. So that will be on there, but then I will take bits and pieces of this and I will sprinkle it into TikTok and hopefully people will enjoy it, comment on it. I think you folks see, I try to respond to most of the comments. I try to like everybody's comments. I try to read everybody's comments. And I really do, I, I go through them, I think you can tell that because when it says liked by creator, that means I read it. Um, so, so I do do that because I really enjoy it. I appreciate it. I appreciate the followers. Um, I've only had to, I think, block one person who made very personal comments, which they're not even about me, about my mother, and I, there's no need for that. Um, there might be people on TikTok that enjoy that uh, back and forth. Um, that's just not for me. I want to share content. I want to share my information. People ask me legitimate questions about buying houses. You know, yesterday I, I, I put that house in Coventry. I bought the six unit. People ask how much you pay for it. Well, it's public record. When I buy a piece of property, it gets posted in the newspaper anyway, so I have no problem sharing how much. You know, I paid 425 for that you know, seven unit piece of property on you know, two acres of land. That is a fabulous deal. Does it need a little bit of work? Absolutely. But I did, I did get a very good deal on that. Um, the nine unit in West Warwick I'm buying, I paid 850,000 for that. Um, that one, I'm not sure what I'm doing with it yet. It's a beautiful piece of property. I'm gonna do a TikTok on it, show everybody. Because that one, I have some options on either condoing it out or leaving it as a rental complex. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that one. Um, but I share the information. And then from there, we can talk. When people ask me questions, how to deal with tenants, I wanna be able to answer the questions. 
I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, tell me. You have a better idea, tell me. There are a lot of people that follow up my answers with some really good information that I forgot or didn't, didn't realize myself. Um, I got some stuff coming up this week that's going to be very interesting that I can't share now because people watch TikTok that um, it may affect, but you definitely will be the first ones to hear about it after I uh, exercise my rights. So that's the story with that. Um, so that, at least I hope everybody understands where I come from on TikTok and what my reasoning for doing TikTok was, and, and that's it. I'm not out here to impress anybody. I'm not out here to fight with anybody. I'm not out here to uh, compete with anybody. I want to just share my information, and hopefully it's accurate and true to form. Um, I get frustrated and watch these TV shows about flip houses that are fake, made up numbers, not realistic. I want to show the reality. Even the home inspections, when we try to sell the house, I want to show those. That's something that's coming up because that's a pain in the neck. So everything's not just all you know, fluff. Okay. Right, yeah, I did enjoy my little fireside chat today, though. I picked this up at Home Depot, $150 at Home Depot, this little um, uh, gas-fired uh, fire pit. And uh, it's pretty cool. My Chris's cousin had one in New York the last time I went and visited. I said, that's great. So like, Boy, $150 at Home Depot. Nothing special, but it does throw some nice heat, nice ambiance for our fireside chat. And uh, until the next time. In fact, I'm going to use it again later on for that story that I'm going to tell, very specific story uh, I'm going to tell TikTok uh, later on. So thank you.